All right, Shalom. We're going to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kakwadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, Bahashem, meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of his only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as you Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but are Israelites. And also, uh, we also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect pushing out his word in all sincerity and the truth. All right, uh, we're the brothers from the Great Millstone branch out in Des Moines with our special guest, uh, Zakaria, uh, out here from uh, Chicago. Uh, we're coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Harvard Kakwadash. And what we're going to get into through the Spirit is the uh, uh, them that stood so stiffly for their name. All right, because uh, as it is written, if a brother want to grab uh, Ecclesiastes, uh, I think that's the third chapter. It's the first chapter where it says there's no new thing under the sun. Uh, one in eleven, maybe. But um, but yeah, because as you see right now, well, uh, you got different guys that are uh, saying that the name we can call uh, the Lord uh, whatever we want, and so on and so forth. And that's completely contrary to the scriptures. That's why there's even particular laws about not taking the Lord's name in vain, man. All right, in the book of Exodus, I believe that's the uh, it might be the 19th chapter. But nevertheless. Okay. We have to give reverence and honor to the name. You got it, bro. Sure. Uh, this Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9. The thing that had been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Right. It says there's no new thing under the sun. So when we read in the New Testament, which we're going to grab in Acts the fourth chapter, all right, you have men, all right, you have a group, uh, a group of men, okay, leaders of the people, right? that were commanding the disciples, the true believers and followers of Yahweh Shai, not to preach and teach his name, man, okay? They didn't want that to go down. It's the same thing that's happening now, man. Now, who would that be today, man? Who would be the individuals that are saying not to teach in the Lord's name today, man? Because they got to be out here. There's no new thing under the sun. Those same men are here on, upon the planet Earth, mm -hmm. all right? And as we've been going, uh, how, how the Spirit's been uh, bringing it out, well, you got them casting out UIC saying that now, man. You can call the Lord, uh, you'll play yogurt, all right? You have particular men that said that you can uh, call them jalapeno pepper and different things like that, having no fear and reverence towards the Lord's name. That was the whole purpose why the Lord uh, raised up Egypt <laughs> and brought it down. If a brother want to grab that in Romans 9, I believe it's like, uh, don't quote me, it might be 17 or around 13, how the Lord uh, raised up uh, Pharaoh in Egypt and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah come on, go ahead, bro. Uh, this uh, Acts chapter 4 verse 12 It says neither is there salvation In any other for mm -hmm. there is none Other name under heaven <laughs> Among men but that we must Be saved that's it that's it You know so there's no other name that we can Call upon to receive salvation huh? Alright and that's the importance of knowing those Names and having them and believing in them Alright mm -hmm. and we'll grab uh we won't go back to that Chapter but if you want to hit that Romans Perfect. And if you want to grab uh Psalms 91 and um Psalms 91 and uh, 14, Bible Pasha. Well, go ahead, bro. This is Psalms chapter 9 and um, verse 17. It says, For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for, this, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, mm -hmm. and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Right, so the whole reason why the Lord wants to raise up Pharaoh is that he could show his power and that his name could be declared. <laughs> all right? So that's the same thing that's happening now. The whole reason that Esau Edom has been uh, exalted, all right, the Lord is going to bring him down that his name can be declared throughout all the earth. All right, when you read uh, what happened after the Lord had judged uh, uh, those Egyptians and delivered us out of uh, Egypt through his great power, all right, you had people that feared the name of the Heavenly Father. They feared, feared the name Yahweh, and they feared all right, uh, 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 the saints as well, man, okay, because of the great judgment that the Lord brought down. But the whole purpose is that what? So that his name, could be declared, man. That's the same thing that's going to happen now. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. You want to grab that Psalms 91, Bible Pasha? Uh, this Psalm chapter 91 and verse 14. It says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he had known my name. Right. It says, I will set him on high because he had known my name. Right. And it says in the book of Micah, I'll hit this real quick just to land back with that. All right. Uh, this is the book of Micah, chapter six and verse nine. It says, uh, the Lord, Yahweh's voice cried unto the city. And I, and how does that happen? Through the prophets out there on the highways and byways, man. Wisdom cried without she uttered her voice in the streets. So wisdom is crying 
through the men of the Lord out there on the highways and byways. All right, Luke 1 and 70, the Lord spake by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. So that's the prophets out there teaching and preaching, right? It says, the Lord's voice cried unto the city, and the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod and who hath appointed it. All right, so a point of the preaching, uh, a part of the preaching of the true servants of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, all right, they're going to be declaring that name, right? But it says, the man of wisdom shall see thy name. So those whom the Lord wants to deliver, those who have that wisdom, they're going to have the name of the Heavenly Father, all right? They're going to know that name, man. Huh? That's why it says in uh, St. John uh, 17 and um, uh, 4, Bible push out for brother wants to grab that. I believe it's, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to grab it. All right, St. John chapter 17. I can uh, grab this real quick. Yeah, go ahead, bro. This is the uh, the book of Shalak, chapter 17 and verse 10. It says, and the elect shall praise his holy name. Perfect. All right, so so the elect, all right, the one, the, the true believers of Yahweh Shemashah are going to praise his name. All right, the Lord didn't just... All right, just, just like the guys that saying you can call the Lord uh, whatever you want to call him, the Lord didn't say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna give you the name uh, Jalapeno Peppers and that's gonna deliver you. No, that's like that's that's stupid. But they right. gonna know the Lord's name, right? The Lord said, my sheep and my voice, and they follow me. That's right. You know, so they gonna know His name. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's, it says, uh, Saint John chapter <clears throat> seventeen and verse six. This is Yahweh Shah speaking this in the red letter. It says, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Right? It says, Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. So the Lord, when Yahweh Shah was on the scene, he was manifesting the name of the Heavenly Father to the disciples, right? And the same thing that's happening now. So those men, they would be doing what? Manifesting the name of the Heavenly Father and his only begotten Son, because we come in the name of the Son, right? They will be manifesting that name uh, uh, to the rest of the people as well, man. And that's why we, hey, uh, each lesson, man, we start off giving all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. We tell you the true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and the true name of his only begotten Son is Yahweh Shai. All right. Because you had guys talking about some, well, everybody don't speak Hebrew. Well, we just taught him that. All right. Within two minutes of the lesson, we just taught him the Hebrew, man. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh in the Hebrew, and his only begotten Son's name is Yahweh Shai, man. All right. So all these different excuses that these men have and why they don't teach the name and so on and so forth. All it is is showing forth that they aren't the true men of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Now, when you go into this word manifest in that St. John, all right, it says, I manifested thy name. Now that word manifest in the blue letter says to make manifest or visible or known what has been hidden or unknown. So the name of the heavenly father has been uh, uh, hidden or not well known in this time period, man. All right. So now we're making it well known, and the Lord is going to continue to do that through the teaching and preaching of his true men, but showing forth his power. All right, as we're going to read back in the book of Acts, the fourth chapter, all right, they had healed the man, and then that, that gave glory unto the name of the Heavenly Father, man. All right, well, gave go glory unto the uh, uh, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, should I say, man. Okay, and the same thing that's going to be happening in this time period, and the rest of the judgments that the Lord is going to be bringing forth. All right, in the book of Isaiah says that the Lord would not give his glory unto another. All right. So with the judgment that the Lord brings upon the planet Earth, all right, he ain't going to give his glory into another God, another deity, another name. No, the glory is going to be given unto Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, man. Well, his name will be renowned throughout the earth. That's it. You know, it's going to be refreshed. That's it. That's it. It also says in the definition, uh, it says to manifest whether by words or deeds or any other way, mm -hmm. make actual, invisible, realize to make known by teaching. So that's what we do. We go out and teach the name. Mm -hmm. So any guys that are out there, oh, it doesn't matter. We aren't sure what the name is and this and that and the third. Well, obviously, they are truly sent and set up by Yahweh by Shemir man. This is, uh, you brothers, have anything else? If not, we'll hit that Acts. Uh, we can go back in Acts uh, chapter 4 and verse uh, 5. This Acts chapter 4 and verse 5, it says, And it came to pass on the morrow that there were rulers and elders and scribes and at and an Ananias, 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 the high priest, and Caiaphas, Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, <coughs> and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have he done this? Right. So a miracle had been done. All right, and then they were asking, okay, well. What power, what name do you come in, right? So it shows you the importance of the name, all right? Because I was going to bring glory unto whatever whatever you would have said that name was or whoever they would have said, that would have gave glory into that God, 
right? So that's why it's important for us to make sure that we're coming in the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. Mm -hmm. All right, because the Lord doesn't want the glory to be just given to God. All right, the glory is going to be given to Jesus. No, man, it's going to be given to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. That is the name that's going to be feared throughout the planet Earth. But go ahead. It says, verse 8, Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, <laughs> if we this day be examined, of the good deed done to the impotent man, mm -hmm. by what means he is made whole. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Yahushua Mashiach of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom the Most High raised from the dead, even by him do it this man stand here before you whole. That's right, man. So they immediately, all right, they said the Holy Spirit was on him, right? <laughs> so the Holy Spirit was on him and let him know, like, hey, man, through Yahushua. All right, what's this done, man? So that that glory will be given unto that name. But go ahead. It says, this is the stone which was set at naught of the build of, so like of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, but there is no other name under heaven given among men, but that we must be saved. That's right. And that's what we read earlier, man. But you can keep reading, bro. Come on, verse 13, it said, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. And that's key, man. All right, they were bold. With that name. They were standing stiffly. All right. It didn't matter what they was talking about. All right. What they were saying. We're going to do this and we're going to do that. All right. The threatenings that they had upon them. They was bold in that name. And that's the same energy and mindset that we have to come in, man. These other guys are not in that same mentality, man. They aren't bold for their name. They 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 uh, uh, straddle on the fence. Oh, well, we don't know if that's the name and this and that and the third. Or, well, you can call them whatever you want. Nah, man. We standing in boldness, boldness man. All right, the true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. His only begotten Son name is Yahweh Shai. And that's what we're standing upon, man. Being unmoved. Go ahead. I that's it. Real quick, uh, mm -hmm. just real quick, just to uh, back up the point that you just made. This is, um, this is Sirach. <clears throat> this is Sirach chapter uh, 39 and uh, verse 24. It says, as his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling the blocks unto the wicked. All right, and, and the stumbling block that these uh that these other guys is is is, is, is uh, uh fumbling over is the name, man. All right, why? Because the Lord hasn't given them. All right, ultimately the Lord hasn't given them His name. All right, all right. so it's going to be a stumbling block into those that's uh, uh to the uh, uh righteous that's trying to seek after the name, man. That's right. Hey, just to uh add um to that, this is the book of um <clears throat> this is the book of Malachi. I'm sorry, this is the book of uh, Daniel. Chapter 12, and this is Daniel chapter 12 and verse uh, 10, it says, many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So land back with that precept, hey, it's plain unto the holy, it's stumbling block unto the wicked. All right. It's simple to us to understand like, oh, okay. Yeah. We got to call on a true name. All right. All right. It says in the book of Proverbs 18 and 10. Bible shot. This is Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10. It says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth into it and is safe. That's right, man. So that name is what we're going to call upon and receive deliverance, man. All right. In the book of Zechariah, it lets you know that the elect, those that's delivered from these coming calamities, all right, the nuclear destruction, they're going to have the name. Zechariah chapter 13 and 9. And I will bring, or verse 8, and it shall come to pass that in the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein. So two thirds of the Israelites here in this land, they're going to be destroyed, man. Plain and simple. But one third of the Israelites in this land, they're going to be delivered. All right. It says, verse nine, and I will bring the third part, meaning that one third through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is my power. So the elect, the one third that gets delivered out of this land, they will have the name. <laughs> Plain and simple, man. All right. That is necessary for salvation. Acts 4 and 12. We already read it. So any guys that say they ain't got the name and they ain't sure and this and that and the third, well, obviously they aren't of the elect, man. All right. They, those aren't the men of wisdom that will see the Lord's name, man, that it will be manifested to. And just to keep it said that the election have retained it and the rest were blinded. That's right. They obtained the truth through what? The name. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. it. That's it. You can go back to that Acts. Come on, this uh, Acts chapter four, and uh, verse thirteen. It says, 
Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Yahweh Shai. And they said, Behold, and beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. <laughs> right. So here it is. The Lord showed forth his power. You got this man that was healed through the name of Yahweh Shai. They couldn't even speak against it. But even though they couldn't speak against it, they still came up against those men, man. All right. They were fighting against the Most High. All right. And it's the same thing that's happening today, man. These men that's coming up against us that are coming in the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, they're fighting against the Lord, man. Go ahead, bro. It says, um, verse 14, and beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to, the, to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them is manifest to, to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that is spread no further among the people that are straightly threatening them, that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. That's right. So they threaten them just to not preach in the name of Yahweh Shai. Not to do these miracles in the name of Yahweh Shai. They, they, they were standing stiffly against the name. All right. We're standing stiffly. All right. For the name. Through the spirit of Yahweh Shai. Man. Mm -hmm. Keep reading, bro. If I may add just real quick. Uh, in the second Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. <clears throat> it says, but there were, there were false prophets among the people. Even yeah, as there shall be false teachers among you who, who privately uh, shall bring in damnable, damnable heresies. Even denying the Lord that that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. All right, and that's ultimately what's happening to these uh, to these false prophets, man. All right, saying that you don't have, uh, you don't have to teach in the name of Yahweh Hashem Al Shah. All right, coming against uh, uh, the prophets, starting with our elders, apostles, of great millstone. All right, uh, it, sa it says that uh, it says that the Lord is going to bring uh, upon them uh, swift destruction. All right, and that's what's happening. All right, you got guys uh, uh, dropping like flies, man. All right, that's coming up, coming up against the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. Just like how, uh, um, uh, I think it was uh, uh, an example, uh, I think in the book of Acts, when the two, uh, you had the the, the, uh, the husband and the wife that came against. Uh, oh, Ananias and Sapphira. Kind of, yep, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Okay, so, so that's what's ultimately, ultimately what's going to happen to these people, man. All right, they're going to start dropping. Yeah, hey, like it says in uh, the book of Psalms, King David, he said, don't I count them mine enemies, or thy enemies mine enemies? And then he says, I count the mind enemies that take thy name in vain. All right, so people that are disregarding the name of the Lord, they're counted as enemies of the Heavenly Father. And they're enemies of us as well. Now, what do you have I say about his enemies? Luke 19 and 27. Those mind enemies that will not that I shall reign over them, bring them hither and slay them before me. So if you're taking the Lord's name in vain, you are looked at as an enemy in the, uh, in the eyes of Yahweh Shai, man. And the Lord has a, a judgment prepared for them. Now, the brother had read that precept where it says they shall bring in damnable heresies. Well, this is an example of that, meaning they're teaching things that will cause you to receive damnation. All right. You teaching that the name doesn't matter. And this and that and the third that will cause somebody to receive destruction, man. That's confusion. Mm hmm. Good morning. Man. No, that was it. Okay. Uh, this is uh, verse 18. It says, and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of, Yah of Yahweh Shai. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether they be right in the sight of the Most High to hearken unto you more than unto the Most High, judge ye. Right. So they were like, look, are we finna listen to y'all niggas? Or are we gonna do what the Lord told us to do, man? And that's the same thing. We go back in these precepts and we see clearly that the Lord wants his name to be exalted, that we're supposed to be teaching that name that's necessary for salvation. All right. But then you got God talking about, oh, it doesn't matter. We ain't got the name. We're gonna get the name of the kingdom. Well, in the kingdom, what are we going to need deliverance for? All right. What are we going to need deliverance from? See, the calling upon that name will be delivered. I don't know if we read it in that Psalms 91 in that last verse, because it's a uh, it's a point in verse 15. Um, yeah, Psalms 91, read 14 again, and then we'll read verse 15. Baba uh, This is Psalms chapter 91 and uh, verse 14. Yeah, come on. It says, because he have set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him high. Uh, I will set. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. 
I will deliver him and honor him. That's right, man. So he's going to deliver those ones that are calling upon his name. Now, just to make a clear point, because Yahweh Shai even said it, many shall say, Lord, Lord, and I will say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. So just because somebody has the name doesn't mean they're going to get delivered. Because it says in the book of Timothy, he that nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. So if you have the name, but you're not departing from iniquity, then the Lord is not going to hearken unto you, man. When you're calling and crying out unto him, man. All right. It says that the Most High heareth not sinners, but him that doeth the will of the Most High, him he heareth. So it goes hand in hand, man. Having the name and being being obedient, but you have to have that name. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple, man. But you can go back, bro. Uh, this Acts chapter 4 and verse 20, you say, For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified the Most High for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was shown. Right, and that's all we got to get on that, man. So we see the, the boldness, all right, that those men were declaring the name in, man, right? And that brought glory unto the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. So the same thing in this time period, man, we in that same vibration, all right, moving in the same spirit of the al Bashim al Shai through the elders and apostles back then, and the same vibration that they're in today, man. We can hit that uh, second Ezra, unless your brother's got some. Con, yeah, that's the spirit. We can start at verse uh, like 42. Con. This is like Ezra chapter 2 and verse 42. Mm -hmm. I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. <clears throat> and in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, and taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their of their heads, he said, crowns, just going into Yahweh Shai, mm -hmm. you know, crowning the, the men. Mm -hmm. It says, and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. Yep. So I asked the angel and said, sir, what are these? Mm -hmm. He answered and said unto me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing. And we doing that now. It says, and put on the immortal. <coughs> right. The scriptures talk about mortifying our members, man, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, killing off the old man, right? So it's twofold, man. Yep. It's both us actually gonna have those new ba uh, new bodies, yep. all right? And also what? That starts off with uh, killing off the old man here. Mm -hmm. It says uh, uh, in the book of First John, I believe it's the third chapter, all right, it says, he that hath this hope, when it's going into the new bodies of having the same uh, body as Yahweh Shah, says, he that hath this hope purified himself, all right? So we're being purified by taking heed unto the truth. All right, ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth as it is written in, in the book of First Peter, the uh, uh, one in like 20 on down or 22 on down. But you got it. Yeah, it says, um, uh, how shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed there into, into the, uh, to the word. All right? That's it. So it's the word that's, that's going to cleanse us and purify us, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it, it says, and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of the most high. Y'all, they crown and receive palm. Right. So it says they confess the name of the <coughs> most high. All right, they confess the name of the heavenly father, Yahweh, but it's going to read further. It's going to let you know that they confess the name of the lamb, that are the name of the son as well. Mm -hmm. All right, you want to grab Revelation uh, 14 and 1 on deck? You said, uh, I think that's it. I think yeah, that's it. it, you know, for the name, but you can keep reading on that. Huh. Uh, yeah, I'll find it. Verse 46 to say, Then said I, I unto the angel, What young person is, is it that crowned them and given them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, it is the son of Yahweh, whom they have confessed in the world. Right. So it's letting you know that it already talks about confessing the name of the heavenly father, Yahweh. And then it says they confess the son's name in the world. Mm -hmm. Right. So meaning that what? They confessed them on this side. Yep. That ain't talking about in the kingdom when they finally start confessing. Oh, we got the name now. Now we're confessing it. No, man. All right. That means that we got it right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Before the destruction and all that, man. That's why it says in the book of Zephaniah, it says that the Lord will return unto us a pure language that we may call upon his name. So the whole reason the Lord gave us back the uh, the, the pure Hebrew, all right, is so that we could have those names to call upon it in the pure Hebrew, man. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It says, then be gone, I greatly to command them that stood so stiffly mm -hmm. for the name of the Lord. That's right. So who's falling in that lot? Who's standing stiffly for the name of the Lord? And who's saying, oh, it doesn't matter, all right? Or well, we don't really know if we got the name. We'll get it in the kingdom, man. You can see clearly who, who's coming in that vibration, man. 
Go ahead. And it says, verse 48, Then the angel said unto me, Go thy way, and tell my people what manner of things, and how great wonders of your how thy power thou hast seen. That's it on that. That's it on that. You could uh, hit that Revelation 14 Bible for sure. Uh, Revelation 14 and 1. Kind of. uh, this is Revelation chapter 14 and verse 1. It says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred forty and forty. That's uh, like a hundred forty four. Forty and four thousand. Right. And this is the same vision that Ezra was seeing. All right. He saw it in a, a, a certain detail. And we're reading that John saw the same thing. Right. Go ahead. It says, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Right. So meaning that they're going to have the name of the father. Right. Now, when you read this in the actual Greek, it's let, it lets you know that it's uh, the father's name and the name uh, of the son. But I'm going to read in another translation. It says, uh, <clears throat> let me see. All right, this is the NLT. Then I saw the lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him were 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. So, let you know that the 144,000, they're going to have the name of the Heavenly Father, and they're going to have the name of his only begotten Son, and they're going to be confessing those names, man. All right, and those that hearken and believe in those names. All right, hearkening to their word, they're going to be delivered as well. That's the rest of the innumerable uh, multitude that Ezra and John saw, man. You know, you brothers got anything else? Uh, this Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4, and it said, And I saw thrones, and they set, up, set upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the for the witness of Yahweh Shai, and, uh, and for the word of Yahweh, in which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with the Mashiach a thousand years. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the those the ones that stood simply for the name, man. That didn't bow to this beast, that didn't worship this beast, that didn't, you know, put the plot that did they, they didn't put the plot down, man. You know? That's it, that's it. That's it. Because they had the Lord, that, that zeal of the Lord in their foreheads, man, and not that beast, man. You know, they stood stiffly for the Lord, even unto death. That's right. That's right. Let us have anything else. Hey, so having that being said, Lord's word, I was edifying. We're going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Lakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Mill, song of rule well, peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and truth. With that, we're going to say Shalom. 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 Shalom.